So we are prepping for the gumbo. My mom is peeling the shrimp. These are the shrimp heads. We're going to boil them in some water. And we're going to make shrimp stock. And we have the shrimp right here. And she's peeling the shrimp. See, the shrimp stock is a very important part of the gumbo. This is where you get the natural flavors of the actual shrimp head. So what she's doing right now, she's letting the shrimp heads boil till it gets to a point where all the juices from the shrimp heads get in the water, and that's how you make shrimp stock. They have been browning for a very long time now. So, it's almost ready. Ooh, all the flavor is popping out. All that flavor. Flavor, flavor. Hello everyone, so today we are going to be making gumbo and this is a family recipe that my grandparents been using for many, many years now. And we're going to start off with six pounds of D&D smoked sausage. This is a very popular sausage that we use out here in New Orleans. This is a patent hot link sausage. This is the hot sausage that we call it. This is four pounds. We have five pounds of chicken thighs. You can use with any, with, with any kind of chicken you want. You can use anything. Then we have a thing of parsley. Then we have green onions. We have our celery, bell pepper, onion, garlic. And these are the dried shrimp that we use. That gives the gumbo flavor. We also have 10 pounds of shrimp that we peel the veins. And these are five gumbo crabs. And these are a pound of crab meat, claw crab meat. And the powder seasoning we use, garlic, granulated garlic I should say, granulated onion, gumbo filet, seasonal, and salt and pepper. So these are all the ingredients we use Plus, we're going to make the roux and we're always going to have our shrimp stock. But you're going to see that in the video. Just continue on watching. Okay, all the seasoning is chopped up for the gumbo. Um, we also um, cubed the chicken and lightly seasoned it. We're going to run the chicken through the oven to, um, you know, just hook the juices off of it. Because we're not going to put the chicken in the gumbo early because we don't want to overcook. Hot sauces. Put in the pan, prick some holes in it because hot sausages have a lot of grease. We're gonna run that through the oven so that the grease can come out the hot sausages. Then we'll slice that. Smoked sausages is ready to go in the pot. So now we're about to start the gumbo. Start with a 22 quart pot. I did gumbo stock. When I cleaned my shrimp, I brought my shrimp head. I have three containers and I started doing this process earlier because I knew I wanted to make some gumbo. So I'm gonna pour all the stock into the pot. Add the smoked sausages, add the dry shrimp, and add the fresh season. But I'm going to save some of my onions for when I do my root. Got to get all the flavor. And you put the oven, I mean, on high. Okay. Sausage. Dry shrimp is for flavor of the gumbo. That's important. Everything, everything that goes in the gumbo plays an important role and is very important for each ingredient in the gumbo. Now we're going to add the garlic in there. Bay leaves. Okay, now we're going to add the bay leaves because we almost forgot about that. Bay leaves. Another important part of the gumbo. No, we'll add more, more water to the gumbo. We want to use most of the juice to be stocked. So as you can see, we're going to be adding some more water to it. 
to let you guys know we chopped the parsley up but we're going to put that on the side until after we put the root in the gumbo it's time to add all the powder seasoning that is the garlic the granulated garlic and this is a granulated onion and then we're going to add season oil we're not going to put salt in the gumbo yet until the very end because all the sausage and everything and this is the pepper because all the sausage and everything have salt in it so you don't want the gumbo to be salty so mind you always do salt at the very end and we're going to stir this stir this up and then my mom is going to add more water to the pot you, you want to have like a good bit of the shrimp stock in here because the shrimp stock brings the flavor of the gumbo See, it gives it the seafood flavor at that because we are making a seafood gumbo. Because there are different types of gumbo, but we're making a seafood one. And don't forget, we got four pounds of hot sausage and five pounds of chicken that we also have to add. So she just added some water. As you can see, it has like this amount of room. This is a 22 quart pot. She's going to add more water. That's all I'm gonna do right now. Okay, this is all that amount of water she's gonna add. Because we still need to add more ingredients. Because we still have to add more ingredients. That's it. And we're gonna let that boil and then we'll be back. So right now my mom is cleaning the crabs. You're gonna add these crabs at the very end of the gumbo, like the last what? How long do you do it? Twenty minutes. The last twenty minutes you add them. These are some beautiful crabs. She's gonna, these basically like five gumbo crabs, but she just break it in half, and it's gonna be like 10. Oh, she's gonna rinse it off, rinse everything off once I finish cleaning. Yes. So you gotta take all the bad stuff out of the crabs, like all the fat and the gook and all the stuff that you mm. don't need. Well, not really crabs, just a dead man. You know, the gut's gonna rinse that off. Mm hmm. I'm gonna take all the fat, flat fat, be some of the flavor. True. I'm just gonna wash them. I'm just cleaning them now, but once I wash them. So I have to put additional holes in there so all the grease could come out, all the grease coming out. Grease. This is a very important step when it comes down to hot sausage. It has a lot of fat in it, but we're going to drain all that fat and cook that down so we don't have no greasy old gumbo. So. It's almost there. Gotta go a little more to cook all. Oh, look at all that fat. Just imagine people put that in their gumbo. Don't eat from nobody if they put all that grease in their gumbo. FYI. And this is the chicken. I'm about to break this up with a spoon. See all that fat that come from the chicken also? Gotta make sure you don't have that in your gumbo. Cause you don't need no extra fat in your gumbo. Cause that would be bad and it will take all, all the way out take all the flavor out of your gumbo if you have too much fat and bad stuff i'm just gonna break this up here look at this one continue on breaking it up gotta let it cook some more okay so we add additional three more pounds of smoked sausage because it is important that you have a whole lot of meat in your gumbo and the gumbo is bringing well it is brawling <laughs> The gumbo is coming to a broil. So you want to cook this gumbo at a fast pace. Continue on watching. Alright, so the chicken and the hot sausage is done. Look at all that grease. Mm -hmm. 
And the gumbo is boiling rapidly and we are going to start on the roux next. Okay, now we're about to add the hot sausage that we chopped up. That goes into the pot. And now we're about to get on the roux. And then we're going to add... We're going to make the roux. Oh, then we're going to make the roux. So we're going to wait to do the chicken. Chicken adds much later. Okay, we're going to add the chicken later. We're going to put that on the side. So we pulled the pot over to the side. My mom is adding a little the back more ground. water. The back to the pot. Also, we're gonna move it over there. The okay, we're moving. All right, moving the pot to the back burner. And we're gonna use the other burner to do the roux. And throw some water. All right, then we're gonna let. This come back to a burl again from after us adding the water and then we're going to do the room. So this is a 22 quart pot and it is like filled up. We got a little bit more. Okay, I'm about to start the room. I think I'm gonna start with maybe a half a cup of cooking oil. Mm. In a hot skillet, let the skillet get hot. I'll do about another half cup. So one full cup? One, um, about three quarters of a cup. Add a little bit more. Three quarters of a cup of cooking oil. If I have to add more, I will. After I stop. I have to let that get hot. Use my wooden, if I had it handy wooden spoon. This gumbo been cooking for now about an hour. It's been cooking. We started around. 45 is like 145 now. Mm -hmm. So this is after one hour of cooking, we're about to put the roux in. Okay, we'll start with three, about three cups of flour. Thing about a roux, if you burn it, throw it away. I'm going to start with two cups and see how much I get. Okay. And this is plain flour. Yes, plain flour. I'm turning my... my, my down from about five to about six. Okay. So what's the consistency it has to bring? This is gonna thicken the um, gumbo up and flavor. Okay, I think we'll put some more come on, put some more cooking oil in here. So you did like... I did three-fourths of a cup, so that's another half a cup. So, okay. That's about... Ooh. Almost two cups of room. Two cups of... Uh, I mean, cup two cups of... Uh, cooking oil. And this is two cups of flour. I'm about to add one more cup of flour. So the earl is probably like at least two cups of earl. About two cups of then one and a half and then yeah. about two cups of earl and we're gonna do we're gonna add another big cup of flour. And so far it's three cups of flour. So three cups of flour. Mm -hmm. See like forever since we made a room. And it was just last year when we made gumbo for Christmas. And the uh, what is like the the part to make the roux? Just a lot of stirring. A yeah, lot of there's a lot of stirring. You have to let it brown. It's like a dark cup of coffee. You know? Um, and you can't let it burn. If it burns, throw it away. You have to throw it away. Once you start a roux, you can't walk away from it. You have to keep stirring it. Mm -hmm. Because once your roux burn, throw it away. It's not, it's not any good. You have to start over. It'll, make your whole, it'll ruin the whole flavor of, of whatever you put a burnt roux in. Oh. It's going to take it some time to start browning. Mm -hmm. So basically, plain flour. And, and cooking oil. But we use uh, corn oil. Corn oil. Yeah. Basically, whatever your preference is. Yeah. What about olive oil? You think olive oil going to be too much? Olive oil may burn too fast for a roux. Depends on if you're used to cooking with olive oil. Depends on. 
Yeah, you don't want nothing to burn. Mm -hmm. So if you don't if want not, yeah, if you, if you cook it over, or you think you can do it, go for it. As long as it don't burn. Okay. So like vegetable or canola or corn or Yeah, it's your preference. Your preference. What you used to cooking with. Mm hmm So he just I just don't care for vegetable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been a good, good, hot, hot minute. If you feel minute, like, like it's um, getting away from it, it's getting too dark, turn it down and keep it slower. Just don't let it burn. Mm -hmm. So basically, you burn your roof, throw, throw it away. Throw it away, <laughs> right. You burn your roof, throw it away. It cannot be salvaged. So if you never did a roof before, I would say you make sure you have a lot of cooking oil and flour on deck. Cause you might need to throw your first one away if it did not, if, if it did not succeed. So what is so the purpose of the root is to have it what? It makes just your, your gumbo thick. It thickens up the, the the juices of your gumbo, the gravy. It thickens it up. Mm -hmm. Cause you want it flavorful, but you don't want water. Watery gumbo. This one gives give it some, you know, a little thickness to it. But why sometimes? Why you can't just put like regular flour into the pot? Because it's gonna be white. Oh. You want to you want to give it that, that dark caramel color also. Okay. I'll just wait some right there. Yeah. Oh, it's really browning. I see. Mm -hmm. You see it when it's browning? Huh? Yeah. I never even saw you do this. Like growing up, I see you start at the beginning, but I never like really like stay and pay attention right. to you do this. Right. When you do and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna fry down some onions, add some flavor to it also. Okay. So. I'm still cooking it down. Ooh, that's gonna be good. That was from the leftover onions that we started off with in the beginning of the video. Yeah, put some onions to the side. Yeah, for the root. Yeah, that is like a almost like a cocoa brown, almost to the point of a dark dark brown. Yeah, we're gonna get it real brown. Chocolate brown. Okay. Well, I think we're going to add it to the gumbo. Time to be add. Careful. You don't want this to backsplash on you. Add a little at a time because you want your pot boiling while, while you're adding it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. You need to, need it to uh, make sure the gumbo is boiling. So it can cook it up in there. In there. Mm -hmm. You want it to dissolve, so don't add it all at one time. Okay. You see how it's cooking and it's dissolving in there? Mm hmm. As I add it. Ooh, the steam. 
Now, I think I saw you do this before years ago, growing up. Because I had to watch you do a rule. Can't tell you when. So, you gotta add a little water, you guys, to get all that extra flavor out. Three cups of flour, about two cups of cooking oil. And we got it cooking. We're let, now we have to let it burrow down. Let's not thicken up as it cooks down. Ooh, that looks so good. This is after one hour of cooking. We're not going to have to check it until we at the end, we, uh, right before we at the seafood. So as you can see, the roux has dissolved in here. Lots of sausage, lots of meat. And also another thing, when it comes down to putting what kind of meat do you want to add in your gumbo, like you can do, uh, what they have? Uh, uh, Dewey, turkey sausages, up to you. What's your preference? Right. And what type of sausages that you put in your gumbo? Right. You know, it's, it's up to you. Because I know some people don't like a lot of fat. Don't put hot links, don't put wieners. <laughs> yes. No hot links or wieners. But we'll be back. Continue watching. So we just finished adding the roux. Now it's time to add the parsley that we had on the side. Oh, parsley just make everything so pretty. I just love the green. Always gotta get the green. Yes. Let that cook down. We had the roux about 45 minutes ago. Everything is still cooking down. Oh, it looks so good, and it's really smell like gumbo. You can tell it cooked down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're gonna let it cook down some more in about uh, about another 20, 30 minutes. We're gonna add our chicken seafood, and almost almost done. Okay, it's been one hour cooking with the roux. Now I'm about to add, add the chicken in. Let this cook about 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna add my seafood. Oh yes, lots of meat. Oh, so good. Pretty bird. I've been cooking in here for 15 minutes. Now I'm, I'm about to add my filet. This is 1.25 ounces. I'm putting this whole jar of filet in, in the pot. With filet, you don't want it to lump, so you want to add it a little at a time and stir as you add it. A lot of people put filet in when your gumbo is done, but you don't want to eat raw filet, it's bitter. Put it in your pot, don't, you know. I'm not going to overplug, kind of like put it to your taste. But I know for this 22 what? pot, I'm putting this whole jar of filet. And if I need to add more, I will. This is 1.25 ounces. And you see as you put the filet, stir it up, you don't want the filet to lump on you. And filet gives it that gumbo flavor, right? Yes. So good. Now, because I don't want no more of my gravy to, to cook out, Ouch. I'm going to now turn it down and put the top on. I'm going to turn it down to probably medium heat. I want to put the top on because I want it to stay cooking, but I don't want no more of my juice to cook out. I'm going to let that cook for about 10 minutes, then I'm going to add start adding my seafood to the pot. And I'm going to check and see if I need to put a little more filet. You just do it to taste, and I used to do, do, do mine to look. As you can see, the filet helps thicken up the gumbo also. Okay. And tell them about the thickness. You don't want it to be like... You don't want it to be watery, watery. but you don't... You see how, how it looks kind of rich and thick? You don't want your, your gravy, you know, the juice to be watery either, but you don't want it to be, you know, thick, thick. But this is like a very good consistency. Mm -hmm. With one jar of filet so far. 
Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes now. I think I want to add a little more filet. I want a little bit more filet. So you're going to do what? A little thing and a half? Yeah, probably do a little. This was a little under a full one in anyway, so I'm just doing about a quarter. One and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Put a quarter more from the one. A little yeah. less than a half. All right, that's going to do it. Mm hmm. Oh, it gave it that uh, rich color too. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay, now I'm gonna let it stir. I'm gonna cook for about another five minutes. I'm gonna add my seafood. Okay. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes now. And it's time for the grand finale of the gumbo. All right, 10 pounds of shrimp going in. About to add the seafood. This is the very last end. Our rice is already cooked. I don't have to teach people how to cook rice. That's simple. We already cooked the rice already. We're gonna drop our crabs in. The crabby crabs. Oh, they was already dead. The blue crabs. Crabs are going to turn what? Red, pinkish when they cook anyway. Okay, now we're gonna let this cook another 15 minutes. 15 more minutes left so the gumbo is ready. Yay! Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Seafood is done. Gumbo is done. Ooh. Crabs are done. You have to think about, now I'm about to add some crab meat in here. And I'm going to turn it off and let it sit. Turn the heat off. Crab meat is going to cook in the gumbo because it's going to be so hot. Mm-hmm. Right. Crab meat. The claw crab meat. Okay. Just break it up. Stir it. Gumbo, ladies and gentlemen. It's done. Turn it off. Let it sit for about two or three minutes while you get your rice done. We're about to eat some gumbo. Yes, finally. It's been like two hours and like, you might as well say about two hours and 30 minutes. It took. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Now, once you have your gumbo, move it off the heat. Crack the top on it so that it can start cooling off because this pot is so hot, it's going to continue to cook. So mm -hmm. I'm going to slide off the burner. If this was a gas stove, I would totally move it off the, um, off the, off the stove totally. But while it's being electric, I move it to the cool side. Mm -hmm. Put your top, crack your top on your gumbo so that the heat can start cooling the pot down. You don't want to leave this gumbo out all night. Once it starts cooling down, break it down and put it up because you don't want your gumbo to spoil. When you have a lot of seasoning, a lot of seafood in it, as you can see, it's still bubbling and I'm, and I'm not even on the fire anymore. Mm -hmm. So talk about like when it comes down to freezing the gumbo, like when do you put the gumbo in the freezer when it's hot or it cool down? Um, I wouldn't put it in the freezer right now at this temperature because it will defrost your freezer. Wait till it cool down some. Keep the top cracked on it. Break it down in smaller containers. Gumbo freezes well. This mm -hmm. gumbo, you can freeze gumbo for almost up to six months. Okay. Just make sure you have it in a tightly closed container. Break it down and freeze it. But with us, with us, when people know we cook gumbo, family going to come through. This pot is going to be gone in like a day or two. Right. Once the word get out that we have a pot of gumbo, it's mm -hmm. going to be gone. Right. And uh, how long was it last? Like once you cook it, so today... You know, how many days? I wouldn't it will keep last. the refrigerator more than three days. Okay. No more than three days. But this is a, a done pot of gumbo. Mm. It's ready to eat. That's it. Okay, y'all, we are finished making the gumbo. And we're about to eat it. I hope you guys enjoy watching this video. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you. See y'all in the next video.